In this video we'll show you how we can take the step shaft which we created uh, in the previous video through into the machining. So I'm still in the CAD software now so uh, I can now save this file away and give this a name and now we can go into the machining, machining, turning module. So we're now linking to the machine setup for the turning module. So the first thing to do is check on our tool change position and make sure that we've got some sensible values in here for either a front or a rear turret. So when you're creating a bit of geometry, it doesn't make any difference if you're using a front or a rear turret or whether you draw the geometry above or below the center line because it's here that you determine where the tools are actually going to cut from. So the first thing we'll do is to define a tool. So uh, we'll have a standard turning tool. So I'll set up the uh, direction of where this tool is coming from. So it's cutting from the rear and it's mounted on a rear turret. If we wanted to change the parameters of the tools, this is where we do it. This is a standard 85 degree, uh, uh, sorry, an 80 degree CNMG tip. This is where we put in the tool number for the station number or the turret number. So that's defined a tool, now we need to select it for use. So this is the tool we're going to use. If we want to use constant spindle speed or constant surface speed, then if we want to use constant surface speed, then we put that in here. So we'll have 250 millimeter, uh, uh, meters a minute. And the spindle direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, will depend on how your tools are mounted and what command your machine tool needs. The feed rates that we output can either be in feed per minute or in feed per rev. And if we want the coolant to be active, we switch it on here. So now that we've done that, we've got in the turning, uh, sorry, in the tooling definitions window, we've got a turning tool, and in the program operations window, we've got a single operation which is selecting the tool. So the first thing we might want to do here would be to face off the component. So we choose face, and we give it the start point. Now we can either type in the exact z and x coordinates, or we can choose the screen position. So we make this position somewhere which we know is going to be clear of the bar stock that we're working from. The end point can be x0 or it can be a minus value to take the tool past the uh, center point so we're not left with a pip. If we're just facing off we don't need to have a limiting profile active. So to take that out we down arrow and click on blank. The cut depth, this was associated with the tool when we defined it, but if you want to have a different cut depth, you put it in here. So that's uh, just created the facing operation. If we animate the tool and run the graphics, we just see the tool tip coming in there. So the next thing for that tool would be to uh, do a turning cycle. So we choose turn, and again we need to give it the start point and we need to give it a corresponding endpoint. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving it the two corners of a rectangle. The first corner I gave it would be the top right corner and the second corner would be uh, the bottom left which is a position over here. So what that does is it gives the tool a bounding envelope to work within. Now the tool will never reach this bottom left hand corner because it'll be um, limited by the profile. If we want to leave a finishing allowance on here, then this is where we do it. And we can have the same or different allowances in Z and X. So you can see the bounding box that the tool will work within. On the right hand side of the screen you can see the tools position and you can see the spindle speed increasing as the tool gets towards the center line. So that's um, uh, roughed it out. Now when we create a profile within the CAD system each element a line or an arc is known as a span and the system automatically numbers them. If we want to see the spans we right click the mouse in the graphics area. Oops, sorry that's wrong. We go to the options panel up here 
and we switch on number spans. So what that does is it numbers all the spans for me. So I can see that there's 12 spans that go to make up that shape. Now that will become important in a moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a profile turning operation to remove the finishing allowance that we left. Now to do this I could either define a, a separate tool or use that same tool. So I'm going to use the profile turning operation it's an external cycle and it's machining in the forward direction and the approach and runoff I'm leaving as the defaults which are arc. Now what I want it to do, I don't want it to machine down span number one because that's been machined uh, via, the, via the facing off operation. So I'm going to start at span number two and I'm going to finish at span number ten. So to do that I click on the options tab and I select the span I want to start at and the span I want to end at and then click OK so there you can see the rapid motion down to the start span the arc approach movement machines all the way around and then when it gets round to the end it puts an arc runoff now there's two ways that I can uh, machine the last part of this if there needs to be a chamfer machined, as there is in here, before I do the parting off operation, I can machine just that span as it is. So to do that, I need to set up a tool. So I'm going to have a grooving tool, which is the term used for any grooving type blade, be that a grooving tool or a part off blade. Uh, so that is uh, rear mounted and rear turret. So I select that tool for use, set the spindle speed and feed rates. So the system instigates a M6 command, which will do a tool change. And now I can use the ProTurn command again to machine just span number 11. So uh, when I'm doing that, the approach for that span will be parallel by a couple of millimeters and it will run off there by maybe half a millimeter so the span I want to machine under the options tab I just type in number 11 and then the end span is also number 11 so what happens then is that it only machines span number 11 now obviously the roughing cycle that I uh, created earlier would need to be big enough to accommodate uh, that uh, uh, grooving tool to uh, machine that uh, last uh, chamfer. So I can use that same tool uh, to do a parting off. So to part off I use the part off command here. It automatically uh, gives me the sizes based on uh, the geometry it's found. If I want to switch on things like a part catcher, um, if I want to pause at the end for several seconds or even a second, and if I want to use a chip break cycle then I can do that. I can also reduce the spindle speed as it uh, as the tool cuts down towards the center line. But if I'm okay with just the standard part off cycle I click OK and that just produces a standard parting off routine for me. So having got to that stage, uh, if we wanted to, we can uh, view the whole program again by simply hitting the run command. If we need to speed up the graphics, I can use the button over here on the status panel to speed up the display. This will depend on your PC and your graphics card. OK. So that's created the uh, program. If I want to run the 3D simulation, I click 3D simulate and it loads the simulator and I choose what type of machine. Well, I've got a lathe with a rear turret. Creates the data and then uh, passes it through to the simulation module. And then over here, I can look at the tools that I've defined simply by clicking on the number. Okay, so we click simulate. And we can either view the complete machine tool, or in most cases, we just want to see the focus of the part and the 
tools. So to change the focus, we use these buttons here. So I'll choose workpiece focus. So we just see the workpiece and the tools. The video commands at the top here. This is the speed up and slow down. So I'll just slow this down and then run the graphics. Okay, so in that case there, that's the part. What I haven't done is I haven't set up bar stock, so if I want to do that, I come out of the simulator, and then I can go to the stock button here, define the sizes, and I can define the exact sizes of the bar stock that I'm using. If I don't do that, it just builds it from the extents that it finds within the machining software. So if you need to set up bar stock, that's where you do it. The last thing is to post process. So this is the post processor and we can switch into center line mode whilst the tool is running and then we get the G codes produced and a window opens up at the bottom here. So these are the G codes for that program. So that's how we machine that.